Welcome to Christ Church. The following is a homily from our Sunday morning gathering in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Enjoy. Amen, Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to dedicate this sermon to Mia Vopi, a very special young lady. As I prepare for presenting uh, homily, I usually start three to four weeks ahead of time. I read, I pray, I listen over and over and over until a specific phrase in the gospel touches me and I hear or see a message. While we were river cruising in Europe a week or so ago, I would sit on the veranda and watch God's creation pass by slowly, giving thanks and enjoying the quiet time. I also did my homework. I read, I prayed, I read, I prayed, and nothing. Last Saturday morning while I was driving to set up for the ministry fair, we have an area we call the flats. And as soon as I hit the flats, I just started talking. And I wish I'd turned down my phone to record it because the message came. When I got home from setting up the ministry fair, I sat down already thinking it would come back and it was gone. So then last Sunday morning, as I was coming to church, I turned on my recorder on the phone and I started to teach this message and it didn't come out the same. So I went home, I read, I prayed, and so this is the message to you from God. In the gospel from Mark, Jesus is watching, listening, questioning the disciples, and then teaching. He's asking and confirming if they want to be a part of his ministry. The phrase that I focused in on is the last sentence. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Jesus declares the dedication and attitude of his ministry being similar to that of a little child. We've heard Jesus talk about and teach through the Gospels about the little children. For those of you who are parents or grandparents, aunts and uncles, friends, neighbors, of those who have little children, especially new babies, you realize that those babies are totally dependent on their father and mother. They have the ability to eat, drink, sleep, pee, and poop. But it's their innocence, their frailty, their pureness that is right in front of them that Jesus is talking about. These little children, our little children, they watch, observe, and learn. They are pure in heart and mind, and that's what Jesus is trying to tell us. If we are pure in heart, mind, and attitude in our love of Jesus, that same pureness of love that Jesus had for us is the same love that God has for us. Now, as we grow older, we become opinionated. We become focused in our ways. Materialistic things become more important than caring for our neighbors. Our political views become more important than caring for our neighbors. And I've asked this ever since the pandemic started. Where is the second great commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself. As we age, we become different than we were as little children. On September 11th, I was watching the special that Diane Sawyer had. She went back to all the babies that were born after their parents died on September 11th in the Towers or the Pentagon or in Pennsylvania. 
And these children that they've been following all this time are now 20 years old. The one story that really struck me was a mother with her baby asking another lady who had stepped aside and was kind of isolated with her baby. And she asked her, how are you going to tell your baby about his father? And that lady responded, I will tell him that he lives in heaven. I will tell him that his father would have loved him. And I will tell him that his father is always with him. All you have to do is look inside your heart. Then when that little boy was about three, there was another recording by Diane Sawyer of this little boy answering the questions that his mother had taught him. She said, where's your father? And he said, he's in heaven. And does your father love you? Oh, yes. And if you want to talk to your father, where do you go? And he looked down and he touched his chest and he said, in my heart. And at 20, he said he still looks into his heart to see the father he never knew. As we look into our hearts, do we see our father? The father of our Savior, Jesus? And do we go with him as we go on our journey of life? The older I get and the more pastoral care I do, the more I understand that love that God has given us to share with one another. The more I look into my heart and see my Heavenly Father. Each Sunday morning, as I sit there, I look at you all. Sitting in the nave, listening to whoever is preaching, I see the nods of acknowledgement, I see the smiles, and I hear the laughs, or sometimes other reactions. <clears throat> and I smile in my heart, and I smile under my mask. Over the past few years, getting to know each of you and your stories and your lives, I give special thanks for this very special place and you, these very, the very special people who are here at Christ Church and throughout our virtual world. And the best part about being up here, I get to see the little children running back in after godly play to join their parents. Watching these young children grow up to be young adults but I also see the presence of little children in you, the older and the young, sitting in front of me. And it is so energizing, invigorating, and uplifting. I see God's love in you because I see the love of God between you. I want you to do something for me. I want you to close your eyes. And look at your heart and say, I love you. You don't have to say it out loud. Because you can't love anybody else unless you love yourself first. Now I want you to look to your neighbor to your left. If you choose and say, I love you. And then look to your neighbor to your right and say, I love you. Some of you all haven't learned left or right. (laughs) And now, most importantly, I want you to look up and say, God, I love you. I embrace the love of God as I share God's love through these words with you. And I hope the words that I share from you, from the very deepest part of my heart, are received with the same intensity of love that they are given. I hope that you can feel the compassion from me to you because I truly mean these words I know that together we can change the world by sharing this same type of love from God as we go out into the world outside these walls each day in the work that we do in school when we are learning 
and at playtime when we relax. Whatever we do and wherever we are, we are disciples of Jesus. And just as Jesus told his disciples, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Amen.